Today I'm installing this single Bilstein shock on the FJ Cruiser behind me. Um, I actually do have two of them. Um, I'm going to be putting them up front in order to level it out. There's quite a bit of rake coming towards the front, especially since I put the winch and the front uh, upgraded bumper on. And these are the Bilstein 5100 series struts uh, for the FJ, which basically, if you're not familiar with them, uh, they allow for adjustable ride height. Um, so there are four different notches we can uh, mount the spring on on the shaft here and uh, based on which notch we put it in it will raise or lower the vehicle um, and I'm only doing the front um, I had considered doing a full you know regular lift kit uh, doing the front and rear together however uh, I recently parked in a parking garage that this thing barely fit in as is and I don't want to be limiting myself on where I can take this thing uh, height wise um, I, I could probably take off the factory roof rack and gain a few inches there, but I'd rather not have to do that. So we're just going to go ahead and lift the front to uh, match the rear, kind of match the rear. I'll explain a little more. So if we look at the paperwork that comes with these things, we can see that uh, each of these four different notches that I was saying on the shock body uh, give us a different amount of average lift, they say. So the bottom notch, uh, we would get normal ride height all the way up to two and a half inches uh, at the top notch. So the first thing I need to do is measure the front and the rear of this thing to see how much of a rake we have and how much uh, we're going to need to adjust this. Because once we get it apart, there's going to be no way to measure. Starting off with the front, I'm just going to go ahead and measure from the ground right up through the middle of the wheel to where the fender flare is. Up front, we've got about 33 and a half, maybe just a hair over. And in the rear, about 36 and a quarter. So that comes out to uh, about two and three quarters of an inch difference between the front and the rear. So in order to bring the front perfectly level with the rear, in theory, we'd have to bring it up two and three quarters of an inch. Now, ideally, we'd be doing this with a full tank of gas and having the, the FJ loaded uh, pretty much how we would for daily use. I'm a few gallons shy of a full tank, so I know that will bring the rear down just a hair more. And uh, quite often I carry pretty heavy stuff in the rear and uh, I pull a trailer more often than I'd like. I know that I don't want the front to be perfectly level. I would prefer it to be a little bit under. Um, now on this chart here, we could go with the two and a half inch. Um, however, I think that will be a little too close, so I'm going to go with the 1.75 inch. And I'll be pretty happy with that, especially since uh, once some weight gets put in the back for whatever I happen to be doing, it'll uh, kind of pretty much be leveled out at that point. I'm going to start with pulling off the little tin foil skid plate here underneath the bumper, which will allow us to drop the sway bar, because the sway bar will eventually be in the way of pulling out the strut. This is going to be take two of uh, doing this. I already did the other side yesterday. I had intended on filming it, but it just got so out of hand that I'm throwing away all that footage and we're just going to film this side. That is the unfortunate thing about living in the northeastern part of the U.S. It's all the road salt they use in the winters to keep the, the roads from freezing. Uh, it rusts out our cars terribly. Uh, and just for reference, this should take no more than three or four hours to do both sides. Uh, on the other side, it was. I tried doing it the way that it should be done. Um, it, things are just so rusted, I, it wasn't working out. Um, so I tried another way that didn't work. I tried another way that didn't work. Finally, was able to get it done. Um, and I think that if I refine the technique from the other side on this side, uh, this should go much quicker. So the way I'm going to do this is not necessarily by the book, uh, so to speak. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now, it doesn't look too bad on the surface. Uh, most of the stuff under here has been wire wheeled and painted uh, within the past year or so. So things look nice and black and clean. Um, you can see this thing's all kind of rusty crusty. That's what everything under here looked like before it was painted. And uh, so it looks good on the surface, but there's a lot of problems lurking underneath and all the connections and the bolts and everything else. So let's get to it. 
Now just a quick rundown of the game plan here. First I'm going to disconnect the sway bar end link that will drop the sway bar onto the ground. Uh, then I'll disconnect the steering linkage right here, the rod end, uh, drop that down. And uh, what removing those two does is allows us room to pull out the shock uh, once that's free. So we'll pull those two. And we've got three nuts on top of the uh, strut tower here around the base. We'll pull those off and from there we'll disconnect the steering knuckle here at the bottom. There's two bolts that go upwards. I'll pull those out. And that will allow us to drop the lower control arm down independent from the rest of this. And on that same note, I will loosen up the bolts that connect the lower control arm to the frame, uh, making note of the position that they're in because this is how alignment is set. And I want to be able to put the alignment back to where it was. Um, just as a baseline, we will need to get this aligned after putting the lift on. So uh, we'll get a, a better alignment once that's done, but just for getting the alignment shot. We want to be able to put it back where it was. Then in theory, this would just drop out. We take out the bottom bolt, pull it out, put the new one in, and reassembly is reverse. The, this side looks a little better, but on the other side, there's next to nothing uh, left of the cotter pin that holds the steering rod end to the knuckle. Uh, and usually we can just use a pair of dikes like this, uh, we'll kind of bend the ends out and pop it through, but on the other side, I just had to throw the impact on and just crunch right through it.
we're up for an initial test drive right now. Uh, it's starting to get dark, but um, just to make sure everything's riding fine. Uh, one issue I've found already, which I'm turning around to fix, is I can hear a dust shield from one of the brake rotors rubbing on the rotor. Um, the dust shields that are on there are really freaking crusty, so you know you just tap it and the thing bends. Uh, so I'll just bend those back. We'll, uh, we'll get that clearance all set, and then we'll uh, take it out for another ride. All right, we got the dust shield all taken care of. Just put a screwdriver in behind it, pop the back out. Not a big deal. Um, in theory, those should be replaced because they're pretty rusty, but I'm not going to bother because once you start replacing parts, where do you stop? Next thing I know, I'll be out more money than a brand new 4Runner, so uh, I'm just going to leave them. But uh, anyway, we're up for test drive now. Everything else feels great. Uh, I can noticeably tell that the front end is a little bit higher than it used to be. But I'm used to kind of looking down at the road a little bit, whereas now, keeping my head in the same spot, but looking up a little bit higher. Uh, I really didn't think it'd be noticeable, but it's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, like I said, everything else feels pretty good. We're not going too far because I need to get the alignment on this before we go too much further. Or else we're gonna destroy the tires. Uh, I can tell just by looking at this that the camber of the tires is off a little bit from what we gained on the lift. So first thing tomorrow morning I'll bring it in. My tires are kind of junk anyway but I'd rather not destroy them. I'd like to get a few more miles out of them at least. So we need to bring it in for an alignment and we also need to check the alignment of the headlights. Uh, so once it gets dark out I'll go ahead and do that because we don't want to be blinding oncoming traffic now that the front of the FJ is lifted higher. Because um, there was kind of a cutoff on the headlight beam where you know the, the top of the beam will go, and now by lifting the front, we've essentially lifted that up and angled it up higher, so we could be blinding vehicles, and I just want to make sure that I'm not doing that. Uh, so we'll check that out. If we need to adjust it, we'll adjust it. I'm not sure if I'll get that on video. It's going to be kind of a pain in the dark. But just know that we're gonna do it um, and on that note there were a few things I didn't really film um, the side that I did film went a lot smoother than the first side I did because I kind of had the technique refined a little bit uh, on the first side uh, it was it was a lot of trial and error man like it was just like this is the way it's supposed to be done I can't do that because everything's so rusty and it's just not coming apart. And parts are just tightly packed together on these things. Um, whereas, like, you know, you work on an older car, everything's just so easy to get to. You can just swing a friggin' hammer anywhere you want. Um, on these, it's not so much the case. And maybe that's more of a Japanese versus an American vehicle kind of thing, for, rather than an older versus newer, I'm not really sure. Um, but anyway, so. <laughs> There were a few things I didn't film just because they were such a pain in the butt to deal with the rust bolts. I didn't really have the patience to deal with the camera as well at the same time. But I think with what I showed in the video, you kind of get the gist of it. Um, none of my videos, just to be clear, are meant to be instructional videos. Um, they're for entertainment purposes only because I just can't carry the liability of uh, instructing somebody to do something. And then, you know, maybe that technique wasn't quite right, or maybe, you know, somebody got injured by following what I did. Um, so, the way that I try to set these up is that, you know, you kind of follow along with me. You can, you know, watch over my shoulder what I'm doing. If you choose to repeat it on your own, you know, so be it. But uh, I, I am certainly not instructing anyone to do anything that I'm doing. So, um, but anyway, let's cut to some scenes on the outside and check out how it looks. So here she is, sitting high and mighty with the new Bilsteins. Now I ended up netting two and a half inches of lift on here uh, using the third setting on the shock, which was supposed to be about one and three quarters of an inch. So definitely glad I didn't go with the top notch. As you can see, it's sitting pretty dang level right now. So we're only probably a quarter of an inch higher in the rear than in the front. And uh, if I had gone with the top notch, I would have ended up having to take the shocks off and uh, readjust them. And definitely glad I didn't have to do that. Um, I guess the alternative would have been to find a one inch or maybe a three quarter inch spacer to 
throw in the rear and lift that up too. But like I said in the beginning of the video, I really didn't want to lift the rear. And I'm not sure if it's coming out in the video, but uh, to me, this is just so much more of an aggressive stance than it had previously. And uh, I think it's pretty good looking. So uh, definitely happy with how it came out. And uh, as of now, I'm glad I didn't do a full lift. Um, we'll hit some trails eventually and we'll see how it does. Uh, unfortunately, we're we're getting closer to winter here. Um, I haven't haven't filmed any of the trails I've been on with it so far. Um, as we get closer to winter, a lot of the trails get shut down and turn into snowmobile trails. So definitely try to get out and uh, film something before they become total snowmobile trails. But uh, just got a few more things to talk about here. Um, like I said, it was pretty rusty, so didn't go exactly as planned or exactly as it should have gone, but. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that now. So like I was saying, a lot of the stuff on here was so rusty, I couldn't install these the way that I wanted to. And I just kind of want to mention a few of those things. And there are a few things I didn't show on camera either, just because they were such a pain in the butt being rusty. Um, the biggest things that I didn't show that I think are really important, uh, in my opinion, are the control arm bushings. So on the upper control arm, um, ideally, when, it, when we're lifting a vehicle, we want to loosen the bolts that hold the, the bushings for the upper control arm to the frame. And then uh, once the vehicle's at new ride height, setting on its own weight, that's when we want to tighten them back up. Or else the bushings will be torqued because, or maybe not torqued, but they'll be, they'll be twisted from a neutral position. Uh, we want them to be in a neutral position at ride height because uh, otherwise it'll overstress them and wear them out prematurely. Um, the bolts were so rusty that I didn't do that. Um, it's the same case on the bottom uh, lower control arm too. We want to wait to tighten up the bolts that hold that control arm to the frame until the full weight of the vehicle is sitting on the tire. Um, and that kind of gets taken care of during an alignment when we bring in for an alignment. Um, so that's not as big of a deal. It's really the upper control arm that I didn't touch at all. Um, so I may have problems later down the road uh, with the bushings wearing out on the upper control arm. Um, I'm not really concerned about it right now because I think I'm only about an inch over stock height because uh, these springs have sagged so much. So we were riding about an inch below stock height, I think, for quite a while, and uh, now we're about an inch above. So we're just kind of kind of flipping the bushings a little bit. But um, that that is the biggest thing, in my opinion, that uh, I would have liked to have done, but I didn't just because I didn't dare to touch the bolt on the upper control arm. Um, I knew if I did, I was going to be in for a world of hurt, kind of like uh, everything else. And along those lines, um, I did already bring this in for an alignment, but I need to bring it in for another one. Uh, so I went in for an alignment. Um, there were a couple lower control arm bolts, the little cam bolts. Um, I don't think I really showed them too much, but um, because they were a pain. Uh, and I couldn't really get a couple of them to move, and the alignment shop couldn't get them to move either which means they couldn't do an alignment on the driver's side. So they couldn't adjust the, uh, the, the camber of the tire, so how it leans uh, relative to the vehicle. Uh, they weren't able to adjust that, and it was out of spec with the new shocks. Uh, so I ended up uh, having to replace that arm, uh, which I didn't bother filming because that was just a pain in the butt. Um, I had to cut the arm into three pieces to get the cutoff wheel in to zip off the bolts. And, uh, long story short, $200 later, I've got a new control arm, a new lower control arm on the driver's side. Um, apparently, they were able to adjust the passenger side fine, so I didn't bother replacing that arm. And one other thing that I want to note, uh, when you saw me sitting in here, kind of holding like a 4x4 post and pounding with a sledgehammer, that was to break loose the top of the strut from the strut tower, because that was really rusted in place. So with a combination of pounding, uh, and using a cold chisel to pry in between the top of the strut and the strut tower, I was able to separate it. Um, this side was a little more difficult than the first side I did. Um, the first side I was able to just use the sledgehammer. So to go into a little more detail there, what I did was I, I took all the bolts off the top of the strut where it's bolted to the strut tower. So that was just free floating in theory, uh, if it wasn't rusted in place, it would be free floating inside the top of the strut tower. Then I left the lower bolt attached to the lower control arm so that when I used the 4x4 against the lower control arm with the sledgehammer, it would pull down on the strut, trying to separate it from the strut tower. 
Now, by no means do I recommend doing this. Um, you know, it could certainly screw some stuff up, but this is just one of the things that I had to resort to uh, because things were so rusty. I think maybe if I had an air chisel, I might have been able to get the, uh, the air chisel to break the strut loose from a strut tower, but um, that's not something I currently have access to at home. So we just went with a sledgehammer. But um, anyway, I'm kind of droning on now. Uh, I appreciate you staying tuned. Uh, you know, obviously more to go, more, more stuff left to do on the FJ, but um, I think this is a video that a few of you have been uh, really looking forward to seeing. So uh, hopefully it lived up to your expectations. Um, it definitely wasn't a how-to video, and uh, those aren't the kind of videos that I really want to get into making. Uh, so anyway, um, again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate your views. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, I always appreciate a thumbs up on the video, so uh, we'll see you next time.